this week. Episode 313 of Stogie Geeks. Drew has some questions that he's going to ask me from his emails that he's been getting. Drew at stogiegeeks.com. And some questions that he has been getting from some of the gatherings that he has going to. Cigar gatherings uh, since his uh, debut here on Stogie Geeks. Uh, please note, in true Joe Hosempa fashion, I do not know what he's going to ask me. So I'm super excited about that. I poured myself a beer. I've got myself a coffee. Uh, later on this week, um, this week, <laughs> later on, um, we're also going to talk about the anti-smoking bill that could ban catalog and internet sales, and it uh, passed a subcommittee. We'll see how that goes. Uh, Drew and I will break it down, what it could potentially mean for the industry. We'll give our uh, opinions on that. And later on in the Stick of the Week segment, we are going to debut the Placencia 146 Cosecha and talk all about it. And then we'll let you know what we've been smoking. Episode 313 starts right now on StoryGeeks.com. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Story Geeks 313, that's the number of the episode. I'm your host, Joe Hozempa, joined remotely over in Texas, Mr. Drew Gavin. What's up? Good morning, Joe. How you doing over there? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. We're, uh, we're chipping away here at Q4, and um, I am smoking the Placencia 146 Cosecha. Nice. And I'm super excited that they sent me some because I've been all over them all week. As later on in this segment, we're going to take some time and break that down. So looking forward to that uh, as well. And um, when we were talking this morning, you had uh, said um, for the past couple weeks off air that you've been getting some questions in on your email. Drew at StogieGeeks.com, so emails are always welcome. Uh, file all Stogie Geeks complaints to Drew at StogieGeeks.com. Uh, he will handle them with white kick gloves. Uh, there you go. And so uh, I'm super excited about this segment, actually. As soon as, uh, like, I didn't even let you, like, finish the sentence. I was like, yes, 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 let's totally do it. All super excited about that. But before we do that, I want to introduce a new sponsor to the show, McAuliffe Cigars. Uh, interesting. They sent us their portfolio. Super interesting. I got a bunch of bands. Oh, I can't do that, so I got to get above the lower third. I got a bunch of bands here that I'm dissecting. Uh, super excited uh, about McAuliffe coming on board. Uh, one of the things that I want to tell you about McAuliffe Cigars is uh, how importantly they know the customer, right? They really focus their decisions uh, and getting feedback. And they have an opportunity of what they're doing. And I, when I met with McAuliffe Cigars offline, and we talked about the potential of them coming on here at Story Geeks, um, it was one of those things where I was super excited. They're bringing back the Ambassador Program. Okay? So, attention, Story Geeks. If you go to StoryGeeks.com, click on that McAuliffe Cigar logo. Uh, if you're watching this live, when this podcast posts on Monday... Uh, that would be today's 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, Monday the 18th. You go to StogieGeeks.com, 
Click on McAuliffe uh, Cigar Logo. They're looking for brand ambassadors in your state, okay? So uh, if you're watching this live and you want to get to the website, that would be from the banner. You go to McAuliffe Cigars forward slash Stogie Geeks or McAuliffe Cigars forward slash SG, and there's a sign-up form. And it'll tell you all about their ambassador program. And then as you get going, they're going to notify us here on Story Geeks as to who you are and how you're doing. And later on in 2020, we are going to have an ambassadors forum for the McAuliffe Cigars ambassadors that they choose from the state. That's going to be a super long episode if we get all 50 at once. I don't think we're going to get all 50 at once, but... It's going to be super cool to find out what that is. Now, if you're new to cigars and you're not quite sure as to what a cigar ambassador is, um, Drew, before we end this segment, let me remind, please remind me if I don't get into it uh, to get a little bit into the program of what an ambassador does, not specifically to McAuliffe Cigars. So, uh, benefits... Ambassadors, uh, this is with McAuliffe. Ambassadors will receive additional cigars at events. They're invited to a private Facebook group for exclusive content. That means some sales content there. Um, also, check this out. You receive a 25% discount off cigar swag from them and other surprise perks. Now, if you become an ambassador, tell them Story Geek sent you and tell them I'm going to be a great ambassador. So, uh, send a t-shirt to StoryGeeks.com's address. Thank you very much. No, I'm only, I'm only kidding. But yeah, good luck to the Story Geeks listeners. I think uh, it's it's an exclusive. I think it's it's a super cool opportunity, and I'm excited to be a part of it. What do you think about that, Drew? No, I think it's great. I mean, it's one of those uh, things. You know, as I as, as you know, McCall's here in my backyard. Mm. Uh, I'm only a few miles down from Fort Worth. And so every time I attend one of their events here in in Dallas uh, DFW area, uh, they their uh, uh, brand uh, uh, ambassadors you know that they have on staff they're really great. I mean they get out and they really just uh, engage with their customer and engage with you know the pop uh, cigar uh, uh, population and just you know go through and really uh, do a great job at that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what have your What are your experiences with 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 the ambassadors program? Because because here in the Northeast, like the, the, it's it's amazing how a couple episodes ago, I'm making it up three, four, five episodes ago, I was talking about how you know we have these Facebook influences or these social media influences, right? I don't need pictures mm-hmm. of people's shoes. Like it's always them holding the cigar, their shoes, their their socks, or they're in a freaking uh, they're in a cigar lounge. And it's like, dude, uh, is that an influence? I'm like, damn, man, that's a nice freaking pair of socks there. I'm going to go get myself a cigar. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, yeah. It's, yeah. Plus, if you're scoring at home from a business perspective, 74% of business owners are not happy with the return just, just on Facebook alone. I'm sure it's only a matter of Instagram or any other th- things coming up. See, that's what I like, like, like with, with, with that. With, with the birth of social media, when it came out from a business perspective, I was like, okay, in my opinion, it replaced emailing each other jokes, right? Uh, and then also, uh, you know, you, you, it, it gets to be way too political or having a bad day and stuff like that. So I, 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 I you know, if it wasn't for us here uh, and doing what we do, uh, I, I would probably be off the grid for sure. Because I don't think I do anything fascinating. Smoke cigars mm. and, and be Joe Hosempa and Caden's dad. That's, that's my gig. You know what I mean? Yep. But anyway. Exactly. <laughs> no, so. I'm the same way too. Like when I look at when I go online, I have a lot of uh, you know mutual friends, uh, and, and when you see these uh, influencers there, uh, they're posting great you know content about their. Uh, uh, is that me doing it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm uh, like, well, I'm like, what screen? Uh, I'm I'm on a new set, so a uh, 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 a transition yeah. set. So I'm like looking yeah. at the screen, saying, "What's going on over yeah. here?" No, but uh, yeah, it's you know, uh, you know, we had Brenda Scott on. I think what uh, six weeks, seven weeks ago. Yeah, and you know, she was she was talking about the brand ambassador uh, uh, position and 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 seeing those things come back 
uh, to full fr uh, fruition for all these uh, different uh, boutique cigar companies. And and so it, it, it is very uh, – I, I think it's a very needed uh, position uh, for the cigar industry uh, sure. just to get better awareness out there, education, and just being able to, 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 to you know, be in touch – uh, finger on the pulse situation yeah. uh, with with the cigar uh, uh, industry. So yeah, no, that's cool. So yeah, so uh, in regards to the ba the ambassador program, I think it's really needed. Not only with McAuliffe, but definitely with 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 other uh, brands as well. Two reasons: number one, uh, I'm not going to beat it to death. It's a social media influencer thing that has taken the, the the industry as well as other industries i'm not picking on the cigar industry but you know as has, has taken it you know oh i'm gonna be a social media influencer right okay cool uh i'm gonna take pictures and post me smoking a cigar and this guy's gonna give me a couple of cigars a month or a week or whatever the, the agreement is it's like well, what, what the hell is that right second reason let's talk business right it is mm -hmm. impossible for some of these cigar territories for the sales reps to geographically be everywhere. And we all know, and we all say it, whether we like to admit it, if the sales rep's not in the building and another sales rep's in the building and we start talking to that person, we're probably going to have that person's cigar because it's, it's top of mind awareness. It's branding and marketing 101. So bringing back another boots on the ground for another company I think is a super cool move. Uh, for uh, any ambassador program. There you go. Mm. Cool. I like it. So, Drew, you got some questions for me. Fire away, buddy. Yeah, so the questions I get, uh, I've, I've been kind of just stacking them uh, throughout the last couple of weeks. I'm sorry, I'm all, like, falling apart over here now. <laughs> and I got better Wi-Fi. That's crazy. But here we go. Uh, one of the questions I was asked recently uh, was, what are the benefits to keeping the cellophane wrapper on the cigar? Mm. In or out of the humidor? Mm -hmm. uh, either or. Okay. Well, uh, hmm. if you are traveling, okay, like, for example, you put it in something like this, like a leather case, right? Hold on, let me fold it without everything falling out, right? If you put it in a leather zip-up case... I don't do the Bovita pack in the leather case. Like, like there is no cigar that is going to be in my leather case that is going to be unhumidified in time. I'm going to smoke it, right? However, mm -hmm. let's say you're a once-a-week smoker and you're traveling and you travel and you want to have a cigar on the weekend or whatever your cadence is for cigars. If you're traveling with one of these, I say keep it in the cellophane. Two reasons. Number one, keeps it from rubbing against other cigars, which have you ever noticed when you try to save cigars and maybe it's in a plastic Pelican case, the holder or whatever, and they bounce around. Now, I know they all have the foam for individuality in them, right? And you can use that. But if your cigar humidor looks like mine, all the foam is yanked out and it's chock full of just cigars randomly thrown in there. I'm not organize them, keeping the labels, doing all of that there. So it'll keeping the cellophane on should stop it from chipping around there. Um, yep. Now, if you're storing the cigar and you want to let it age, right, keeping it in the cellophane um, will have it go through. It'll be like almost like a greenhouse within a greenhouse effect, right, uh, right. there. Now, we're talking fractions of however that effect goes, but that cigar would, and that flavor that's intended from that cigar would stay within that flavor profile. For example, if you take a uh, Swamp Thing by Drew Estate, right? Mm -hmm. You got your Candela wrapper and you Kentucky Fire Cured, right? It's a different yeah. type of tobacco. Totally, and if you rub that against, well, oh, take our stick of the week, right? It's got a lighter yeah. wrapper. It's a light smoke. In time, week, two weeks, whichever, it could transfer out of that. I've actually had an experience with that. I had a five-count travel humidor that I have on my desk, right? Uh, it's just a little plastic Pelican case one, and I got a 10 and a 15 and a 100, right? And what I did is, like, in the wintertime, I like to smoke pipe. Plus, one of my clients, Wil uh, Wilkie Pipe Tobacco, uh, it just deals with pipe tobacco, right? So if I'm helping him doing some of his marketing and his e-commerce and all of that stuff, I'm going to go to his place and smoke a pipe 
and you want to get yourself acquainted with with the blends. Sometimes I go to pipe events and meet with those guys. Interesting crowd, by the way. Right, that's another show for for another time. <laughs> right, um, right. But you know, and and so here's my point. Because I put pipe tobacco rolled up in little baggies, right? You know, they give you by the ounce or four ounces or whatever you want to buy. That humidor right. is now tainted. And, and, and what I did was, okay, it was summertime. Let me yank out and use the five-count mm-hmm. humidor. And guess what? It started tasting like pipe tobacco. Now, I know mm-hmm. pipe tobacco is extremely a lot more pungent than some of the premium tobacco for cigars. But cellophane, keep it separate. Now, some cigars don't have cellophane on them, and -hmm. that's their personal choice. But most of them would have, if they don't have cellophane, they either have like a cedar block in there because it's a 20-count box and it matches for the size of the cigar because, as we know, they all come in all different sizes, right, Uh, there. And so the block of cedar or cedar-lined or if you take Kristoff, they have all the different, um, you know, uh, extra filling in there. But it's from that blend to keep it that way because over time, it if you take off the cellophane, it will start to mesh and connect the blend. And if you have a bunch of different blends in there and a bunch of different flavor profiles in there, it, yeah. it, it could mix. If you look at Paul Azadorian's humidor here, it's still in boxes within a giant humidor to, to keep them separate. He's got a couple right. of trays for when the boxes get empty and whatnot, but then, you know, those are going to be smoked quicker than, than, than the ones in the boxes. So keep right. the cellophane. Now, last point on cellophane. A lot of people, I've seen this from owning, working, or whatnot. They take the cigar and they smell it through the cellophane. It, does, it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. <laughs> now, I'm not telling you to open the cigar and stick your nose in there and then smell it. Buy the cigar, smell it with your own nose because that's your cigar. Right. Yeah. The other thing. Uh, so what I what what I answered to this gentleman was that, you know, there's actually uh, I went online, did some did some research on it. And, you know, you can have the best of both worlds. You know, first of all, common sense uh, or, or just common knowledge is that it, it's a protection at a protection layer yeah. uh, from dirt, dust, oils uh, and even your uh, skin. Uh, if you touch the cigar often while you're moving it or if you're aging it and things of that nature. So uh, the other point was that um, these uh, from what I actually learned was that these cellophane uh, wrappers are porous. So the humidity will reach the cigar through the cellophane wrap. Yeah. Yep. That was my two cents. <laughs> I, I, I think I think that's a good point too. Like a lot of you know, and believe me, I, I I when I go to a cigar shop, I went to a cigar event yesterday. I got out of work here, went to a cigar event yesterday, and uh, you know, people ask me random que- I mean, questions people ask me are, are kind of uh, are funny, uh, random. I don't know, you know, uh, especially if they like, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen Story Geeks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they ask me a question, I'm like, clearly you didn't watch last week's episode because I talked about that. <laughs> but um yeah they, they you know they ask like you know now if you if you were hell bent on putting 50 Romeo and Juliet bullies in a humidor and letting them age or whatever you're yeah. and they're all the same and you want to take off the cellophane you'd be surprised i talk to people and they're like yeah man every week i take my cigars out and i rotate them in the humidor and do that there and uh, <laughs> You know, before yeah. I had my kit, now my response is clearly you don't have kids who are young because you get time to rotate your cigars. Before right. I was a dad, I uh, says, yeah, man, uh, there's nothing in my humidor that is like I'm saving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, someone could walk in here today with the latest and greatest and I'd be like, let's go. Let's do it now. <laughs> you know, so. Next question. Yeah. Fire away. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, no. So the next question I got was, and it's kind of, you know, my, I have a, I had a smart ass answer to it, but it says, uh, when should I stop smoking my cigar? Of course I fired off. Well, when it would start to burn your fingertips. <laughs> Man. I mean, uh, the, the, that's a great answer. The, the, uh, two pot answer again, right? I should have been an attorney, right? Uh, two pot answer again. I like your answer. If the cigar's Ooh. constructed, right? When it burns my fingertips and it tastes mm-hmm. good being that close to the nub, right? Um, right. The answer that the Joe answer is when you stop enjoying it. You know what I mean? Yep. Like then there are some cigars 
<clears throat> that I've turned around and uh, I just I, I'm I'm out I'm out I'm out for whatever reason. And so when you <laughs> stop and you know you got to remember when you're smoking premium cigars, right? Uh, it drives me crazy seeing people on social media with their toke on and and they're freezing and dude, go to local brick and mortar. You know what I mean? Or go get transfer your garage into a man cave. I don't know what you got to do. But some people <laughs> like to be out in the cold and, and, and smoke the cigar, right? Um, uh, to me, that's not enjoyable. I like to sit down, work. I have the privilege to, to work with, with that. But, you know, if, if I didn't have, you know, when I, had, uh, uh, when I wasn't allowed to smoke at work at some of my, my previous jobs, I, I, you know, if I didn't have a couple hours, I'd never cigar that day. It just is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm not rushing it. It happens right. all the time. Someone comes into a cigar shop, smokes for 20 minutes, leaves like this much left. Whoops. Leaves like this much left and then leaves. I don't know. Time constraint. Why'd you buy a bigger one? Buy a little Robusto. You know what I mean? Right. Buy a bunch of little Chicos. I don't know. Do what you got to do. <laughs> you know? Cool. Yeah. I, I also told them that, you know, the flavor, when it starts to get bitter or, you know, uh, acidic, you know that that's that's probably a stopping point as well, uh, because why take an enjoyable stick, and then have that ending, and then decide prematurely that maybe that stick wasn't all that great mm. just because you had a you know you had a a harsh ending. <laughs> yeah, acidity is an interesting topic, and I don't know if this was in one of your questions m- moving forward, but like acidity is like all right, um, you know it if it's is is it acidic or is it ammonia based? Because those are because this is a good point. Those are two different different mm-hmm. um, reactions that are on your palate. I'll do the easy yeah. one, right? If it's acidic, you, 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 it's not enjoyable, right? You know who who who. So if it's not enjoyable, dump it. Get another one, right? I mean, you know, if it's seventeen dollar stick, don't get another one of those. Get get another one of that or. Or more importantly, you know, try to figure out what because maybe regionally, it could be acidic mm-hmm. to that person's palate, right? The hotter right. answer is if it's ammonia based. Very simple answer: it's not ready. Happens yeah. all the time because when a cigar is rolled today, okay, two choices happen. Okay. So you're in a factory or you go to a cigar event. This is good advice, too. You go to a cigar event. God, I miss those days when, like, uh, Alec Bradley would – I went to a cigar event at one of the oldest shops here in Rhode Island, the Humidor Smoke Shop. Alec Bradley woman came in with the rep and rolled the Tempest for you, the original Tempest. We all know mm. I'm a fan, right? And so – they 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 would roll them for you. Now you got two choices at that point. So if a cigar is rolled today, you smoke that within 24 hours. Okay. Mm. So if you go to a cigar event, which when I was on Cigar Club Radio, I always had a cigar roller at my events, and we always did. I don't know, buy five, get one, whatever it was, right? Uh, you know, and you're not gonna smoke all five in one night. I would tell them after tonight. Put these away for 30 days because if a cigar is rolled today, you got 24 hours to smoke it. And if you don't, it should wait 30 to 45 days because mm-hmm. it will taste like ammonia. And yeah, that, that was and, a follow-up question too because yep. another person had asked me, so I go to the cigar vents and there's a roller there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, <clears throat> should I smoke, excuse me, should I smoke the cigar now or should I wait? And, and of course, I told them the same thing you just said. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you can smoke it now, uh, which is – preferably you know the first like you said first day yeah after that you want to go ahead and just store that in your humidor and let it mature mm-hmm. uh for at least 30 45 days and go forward unless your name is joe Hozempa, no you cannot wait. Th- those are the only ones that i save actually i've saved them oh, okay. for that you know what i mean but i do know how to escalate that process if you want that answer Oh, there you go. How do you do that? And you live in Texas, so you can accomplish that you know when it's like hot here it's like 90 degrees Consistently, mm-hmm. it's ninety, and then it's like seventy-four at night. So you got a visual, right? Yeah. Throw it in your console of your car. It'll escalate the process by ten days. Nice. Proven and done, right? <laughs> It'll escalate. <laughs> I mean, you totally ruin. You ruin like you wouldn't do all of them. So if you had ten rolled, do a couple. But if you're super impatient, there you go. There you. 
All righty. Uh, so the next question I got is the uh, what's the difference about box press cigars? And so what's the difference, Joe? <laughs> Two answers, what? right? <laughs> yeah. Two answers. First and foremost, <laughs> I miss out. Thank God I, I, I do Stogie Geeks, right? Because honestly, if it wasn't for Stogie Geeks, I would not have box press cigars. I would not try them for one reason only, and I've said this here on, 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 on previous shows. I don't, I don't like the way they feel in my hand. You know what I mean? I'm a twirler, right? right? First thing I do, I rip off the label, right? Uh, uh, every cigar, I just, I'm not a label guy, and I, I, I twirl them. As I'm working, as I'm talking, as I'm hanging out in a cigar shop and not working, um, it, it's, just, it's just what I do. So obviously, if you're a twirler, right, you, box press is like ka tink ka tink ka tink ka tink right? Um, it's funny because yeah. some of the box presses, when I'm done, are almost round because I twirl them there, which is a testament to the construction when I do a Story Geeks review because I'm like, yeah, it fell apart. But the reason why it fell apart was because I'm a twirler or because I took it outside in a windy day, fishing, whatever. You know, you can't, like, you know, throw it down and stuff like that. But, you know, um... But box press cigars, there are kind of a couple ways you, you, you can answer this, right? Box press mm -hmm. cigars, what they do is when, obviously when you have wrapper binder filler and you're pressing them, you're infusing them there. There is a frictional component to that madness, right, that fuses them a little bit together and there's less air in the chamber, or yeah. or channel or canal or whatever word you want to use, right? Uh, and then from there, um, because there's less, you're going to get more of the smoke inhale from a wrapper binder filler combined, right? But mm -hmm. if you box press it and it's lined with cedar, which a lot do for a taste, right? Uh, right. Taste proponents there. Uh, you get some of the that um, woody flavor as well, C, uh, cedar flavor, et cetera. Mm -hmm. you know, the only way to escalate that, and I know it's not a box press, so please understand what I'm saying, is like a Romeo and Juliet uh, Cedro number six you know, or anyone that has like a cedar thing, like wrapped in its own like yeah, a little cedar yeah. sleeve. There you go. Cedar sleeve. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it, it, So box press, but I mean, I'll tell you, since Stogie Geeks and doing reviews and sticks of the week, it has opened up my mind of enjoying and experiencing a box press. Yeah. I, I told this one uh, emailer to uh, try the, uh, like the hex, the hexagon by uh, Elmo, uh, Elmo Quete, the Sixto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 an interesting smoke. I mean, it's it, it feels like a um, I don't know a wrench or something <laughs> mm -hmm. in your hand as you're twirling it. Uh, the other one was the uh, oval shaped uh, San uh, Latano oval yep. uh, from AJ Fernandez, mm. and I, and that one I just had. Uh, I've been smoking those probably in the last month. I probably had about seven of those already. Yep. And and yeah, I love that oval shape. I mean, that's just really nice. And uh, like you said, you twirl it in your hand or in your fingers, between your fingers. And uh, yeah, it's an enjoyable smoke. It, you know, cigar smoking is an experience, not only with, with friends, but even if you ever go into a cigar shop alone. So I, I, I love being in a cigar shop alone sometimes. Like I go there, I'm the first one there, right? Yeah. And you're just chilling. And, you know, like this for me, like I'm not a TV guy, so like there's no TV on. I'm just chilling, and I'm, like, looking at the cigar, and I'm like, damn, this is good. Or, damn, this sucks. But either way, yeah. right, <laughs> I'm enjoying a moment, you know? <clears throat> yeah, exactly. No, and the other thing to that, too, uh, I found in my in my uh, travels through uh, reading other uh, smokers' experience, they said that the box press sometimes uh, tends to smoke a lot cooler, uh, not, as, not as hot as the, you know, traditional cigar, but... Uh, again, I, I, I attribute that to just the way you're smoking it at the speed or cadence yeah. uh, of your smoking uh, to that. But, yeah, that was one of the things that, that they were saying that um, in several different platforms yep. that they actually do smoke a little yep. bit cooler. Yeah, you, and I'm, 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 I'm going to say that's probably because of the construction. Maybe it's a little bit tighter. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it could be several other factors as well. Yeah, yeah. And you bring up a good point. 
I sent Stogie Geeks. Uh, I'm doing a lot of reflection on Stogie Geeks, just so we know. Uh, episode 315, two episodes from today, will be my 100th episode that I have been on Stogie Geeks. Nice. So I've officially, in two more episodes, been on two-thirds of the gig. I've been on, th- I'm sorry, I've been on one-third of the ride. You know what I mean? Which is super cool, but, you know. Hopefully, in, in in two years, you'll be you'll, you'll get there too, Drew. You know what I mean? That's right. You know? That's so right. It's it's super cool. But yeah, I've been doing. I looked up the first episode that I ever did. Uh, I actually did that last night, and and uh, <laughs> no, that that was a good episode anyway. But it was fun. A lot of fun. You know? What episode? What episode number is that? Two fifteen. So our listeners can go two fifteen. Was, right. uh, was January second, twenty seventeen. You can go to storygeeks.com, type in episode 215 or 215. It comes up. Uh, they're all divided up. It was, it was a three-segment show then uh, over there. Um, but, yeah, it was super cool. It was cool. it was enjoyable. So that's, uh, that's, that's what I printed out, or that's what I uh, got for our questions. The other stuff that I got was a lot of do's and don'ts. You know, people want to know that, you know, because uh, apparently a lot of the, uh, some of the emails I'm getting are from younger or more uh, just introductory into the cigar culture. Uh, so they're asking about, you know, if I walk into a lounge, do I have to pay for a fee to sit there and smoke the cigar? Um, and yeah. I always tell people the number one thing you don't want to do is just take sticks into a establishment, a brick and mortar, and then don't, you know, maybe, and don't buy anything and then just walk into their lounge and just start smoking because that's not cool. That's about the number one rule. Yeah. Absolutely, hands down. I also think it's tacky from a retailer perspective to post ten dollar cotton fee, five dollar yeah. cotton fee. Don't bring you a shot. Like, like I don't know. Like, I mean, it, it's it's a consumer driven business. The customer is always right, is what I was told growing up. You know what I mean? But I mean, oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's it, it's kind of tacky. If someone gives you a cigar that you absolutely must enjoy. Just buy one from the gig and take off the wrapper and and support the local brick and mortar. Experiment with one, smoke that. They're not going to, you know. And if they are Nazis like that, like, hey, man, you did, you bought a Maduro and you're smoking <laughs> a Connecticut. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Tell him Joe Zeppa from Story Geek says <clears throat> I'm in the wrong shop. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you're just in the wrong. If, if you're going to be like an owner Nazi like that, you know. But, again, you know, they, they are there to... Start a business and make money, you sure. know, even though when they get interviewed, they talk about passion, right? But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know. I, I've seen that. I'm glad some of those signs have been sub- subsiding you know oh, what yeah. I mean? with, with the culture. You know, you have a cut fee and stuff like that. It's just ludicrous. But Right. And the other, the other thing, I, 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 uh, one of the other couple of other uh, emailers were telling me there, you know, they noticed that people drink. Uh, in these establishments that are BYOB. Mm. And, and so I always told them, I said, you know, it's good to, you know, if you want to, if, if it's a community you want to be a part of, uh, it's kind of just customary, just, you know, anybody, you know, you put your bottle out there and you just kind of, hey, if you guys would like to try some of this, go for it, you know. And, uh, you know, and a lot of the people there, you know, they have their own bottles as well and they'll, 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 they'll uh, counteract with that mm. same kindness. Yeah. B- and, BYOB is a sticky wicket. I mean, it, it 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 depends on some of the laws. Some of them even charge. I've been to places, or they do be. I've been thrown out of cigar shops locally. I've been out. Of, I've been thrown. I've been thrown out of the same cigar shop twice locally. You know what I mean? Well, well why'd you do that? Well, what, what happened? Well, uh, here's what happened. I was. Um, can you hear me still? Cool. I just had yeah. a pop in the mic. Uh, yeah. So, um, I would get together with one of my clients at the time. He was a big cellular provider here, right? His name is Bob. He's a big cell- cellular provider here, and we would go to a local shop every Thursday after work, right? And so it happened to be just him and me, bing, bang, boom. It was BYOB. I brought a six-pack one week. He brought a six-pack one week. You know, we'd get some craft beer. Craft sure. beer then is way different than craft beer now, right? Now it's like <laughs> on steroids, but, you know, that's another show, right? Um, yeah. You know, and, and, and you're like, all right. And then we'd go week after week. And, I mean, we went, and so then fast forward a year later, two or three guys are now joining, six or seven guys are now joining, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I walk in with the six-pack. Bob texts me and says, hey, man, not going to make it today. It's my daughter's karate belt test. 
right? Because right. I guess it was winter time and it was supposed to happen on a Saturday, the belt test, but it didn't because they canceled school. Because you know, I mean, they canceled the karate class because uh, they so they had it midweek and they had it on a Thursday. So obviously he's gonna go to that. So I walk in with the six pack, light up a stick, and the owner comes out and he goes, "What are you doing?" I'm like. I'm smoking a cigar. Like he's like, no. What are you doing? I'm like, well, he goes, what are you doing with the booze? I'm like, I'm having a six pack. I'm splitting a six pack, so I'm gonna have three. Like it's a. I'm like looking at him, like, bro, like what, 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 what's up, right? He's like, well, <laughs> you're not a member. Bob is. I was like, all right. So what are you gonna do to become a member? Like I didn't know I was in a members room. Like <laughs> whatever, right? <laughs> and so, you know, and and it's like whatever. And then I says, well, I'm not a member of your groovy club. I, I can't have a beer. And he's like, well, get out. I was like, all right, fine. Cool, right? So right. I bounced, and then that was that, right? So the next week, Bob's there, and I, and I roll in, right? I roll in. And so I had called Bob, and he's like, dude, yeah, man, you didn't know like, you had to be a member? I'm like, I, I got to pay to be a member to bring booze in? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, what the hell kind of business model is that? You know what I mean? Scott's job's still open today, and he does very well, right? We're yeah. friends now. But here's the story the second time. He buys another cigar shop across the bay, right? Rhode Island, like, has this big bay around it, one side, one side, right? People never cross right. bays. I cross the bay every day. But anyway, right? Um, uh, so he kept the same name of that cigar shop. So I didn't know he had bought it, right? So I'm right. like, man. And then, the, guy, and then the, the kid goes, hey, man, just let you know it's BYOB. There's a liquor store right down the corner if you want to get anything. I says, boy, you guys are great. So I go and get the liquor. I, you know, I get a six-pack, whatever, you know. And I take a couple in and, and go because I, was, I was by myself, so I didn't take a whole six-pack. And then I go and I sit down. I says, man, this place is much better than Shop X. Right, yeah. and he goes, "Why? What? What happened over there?" The kid set me up for failure. Right? I said, "Oh <laughs> man!" So I told him what I just told you, and the freaking right. owner comes flying out of the back room, and he's like, "Really, Joe? Really?" I'm like, "Really?" I'm like, "What?" He's like, "This. I, I. I bought this shop." I was like, "Oh, same rules." I got to be part of your groovy little club. You know what I mean? He's like, Joe, come on, like you're killing me, right? You're killing me, and so he threw me out. Uh, that sounds like a night at the Roxbury. But <laughs> I still visit his shops. I out of all the thirty-eight here in Rhode Island, I go to three. We have a one that's opening up, so I'm gonna be saying I go to four soon. And this oh, nice. new shop that's opening up is gonna take the, the 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 Rhode Island. He's gonna set the bar high. You know what I mean? And I'm super right. pumped at uh, what he's doing. But you know, it's another story for another time. It's another promo, right? <clears throat> um, Some of the yeah, some of the so, other some of the other uh, miscellaneous questions I get too is just cigar cutting and just things of that nature. But I, you know, I answer those with, you know, uh, you know, in the same fashion as my experience. It's just it just depends on the stick, depends on what you're going for in the draw. You know, yeah. uh, a lot of people are talking about those. Uh, what do you call those? I don't use those things. Those, the the nub. I don't know what you even call those things. The guillotine uh, with, with the back. The the, the idiot proof cutters. No, they use those 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 pointy knobby like a toothpick. They put it through the cigar at the end and and try to get there and get as much as they can out of that cigar. Uh, oh, but they're yeah. they're talking about those type of yeah, you know yeah. tools, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know suggestions. And of course, I don't I don't use them. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I I don't poke it with the toothpick or a nub thing, and 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 like if it's freaking that good. I'm gonna buy another, buy another one. one. I'm gonna buy another <laughs> one. I mean, shit. I mean, that's what makes a good cigar. When it nubs and it burns your fingertips, and you're like, "Holy crap! I want another inch." No pun right. intended. I want another inch, and and that that that's that's what gets higher on the on on the rating system, for sure. There you, go. you know. So, cool. You got time for one more question? Uh, I didn't, I don't have any other questions at this time. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. All right. There you go. Want to take a couple minutes to talk about this um, anti smoking bill that could ban mm -hmm. catalog, catalog and internet sales, and it passed the subcommittee in the Senate. This week, the Energy and Com Commerce Committee's Health Subcommittee passed HR, you can look this up, HR yep. 
2339. It's a legislative bill that, if passed in the law, could ban catalog and internet sales for tobacco products, including premium cigars. Once again, uh, here's the problem, and no one wants to address the problem. It's also known as reversing the Youth and Tobacco Academic Act, H.R. 2339. It's aimed at the vaping and cigarette industry, yet premium cigars are lumped into the language of the legislation. The bill states that tobacco purchases, including premium cigars, will require retail sales through a direct face-to-face exchange between retailer and consumer. The bill also seeks to raise the national tobacco purchasing age to 21, including military personnel and mm-hmm. it and if approved, the FDA would collect more fees from the tobacco industry. But HR two three three nine has a few more steps before it's in the law. It's now expected to be voted on the Senate floor. Uh, they've made some amendments for it. What do you say? Well, I say we go and uh, write some emails to the Energy and Com- uh, Commerce Chairman Frank Pallone Jr. Uh, the Democrat in New Jersey and Republican Donna Shalala in Florida. I mean, they're the ones who introduced this yeah. bill, and and, and to, I don't think it's going to gain any traction at this point. I mean, uh, I think those are the two uh, people that we can add to the list of, you know, making our, uh, I don't want to say plea, but just make our, our, our concert effort together to, uh, to educate them about, you know, our industry. Yeah. Yeah. So you think we should send a letter and then do that there? Okay. Well, do that and then get our representatives, get your, uh, you know, your state representatives together, you know, and, and just let them know that, you know. And I'm not, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a lot more behind that. But since they're the two, uh, you know, they're, they're the ones who introduced it. Uh, like I said, for me, you know, it it, it is uh, it is something that it's just, un, uh, you know, it's dumbfounding at this point for me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, the FDA's own science underscored our leg- legislative intent, and the FDA and FDA print, uh, funded reports found that traditional handcrafted premium cigars are not marketed to or to be used by children in any significant way. I mean, it's there, right? You know, right. I, I have issues with raising it to twenty-one, and mm-hmm. I have issues with catalog and internet sales. Yet again, government is trying to dictate business. And the premium cigar industry is not addressing the issue. Separate, then regulate. We're going to be lumped in with vape and lumped in with cigarettes. 21 plus for all tobacco products. Easy peasy. Collect some fees. Potentially dictate online catalog because there's no age verification. And then there you go. Um... My take is, if that goes through, people are going to buy cigars from across the pond, have them shipped to their house, whether they're above or below 21. Again, Mm -hmm. it's not marketed to the youth. Catalog sales are going to be around 200 change if they're doing boxes on average, right? Call it 100 if it's a a lower premium cigar, quote unquote, and then we're all going to find some other way to do that uh i had met yesterday with some brick and mortar and they're like the ones that are not online are like this is great this is awesome we now can compete with online it's like dude you can compete with online you just don't want to take the time to make that part of your business model right i almost got kicked out of another shop yesterday for saying (laughs) that but it's like you know come on like you know what i mean but i don't know uh, uh, more. It's gonna be more of the same. They're gonna kick the can down the road. It's gonna. They're gonna vote to postpone that, and then there you go. I really don't know if if it gets lumped into twenty one plus, it really could happen. Yeah, it I really think could so. happen. I think if, if it, it does really... go that route, for sure. You know, I, I agree with you on that. Um, but at the same time, I think our our industry just needs to just you know. Uh, I want to say, wake the fuck up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and get and, and get in the trenches and start really, uh, I mean, lobby lobbying for 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 everybody, you know, in general that that uh, you know with with proven science, with all the uh, you know with everything that 
we have mm-hmm. uh, in our arms that says, look, you know, this 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 is not hurting the population. Mm-hmm. What what is hurting the population is that you're going to put a lot of people out of work. You're gonna you're gonna cost a lot of uh, anxieties uh, uh, with with those type of actions uh, without really looking into this uh, premium cigar co- uh, industry and just really figuring out, you know, is there a, is there a separation point? Yep. Which there which there is. Yep. See, I, I would handle it different. I would go there on the floor, I would whip out my comb and comb my hair, and I would say, Listen, those who follow history and expect a different answer are doomed to repeat it, right? We did this with alcohol. We went from eighteen to twenty one. Yet yep. every May we have prom promise and and for underage drinking, right? Yep. Any state, anything, right? You're gonna get it. Yeah. So, so you know, it's not. You know, we have unfortunately tragedies for underage drinking. Obviously, happens around springtime here in the Northeast. I don't know uh, what the cadence is over there when the weather's usually great all the time. But here, when the weather breaks, you got prom season. This that you have underage drinking, and it happened with 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 alcohol, right? And this is my final mm-hmm. thought here on the subject. If it happened with alcohol, they still found way to get their alcohol. They still found way to break the law, quote unquote, yep. from eighteen to twenty one, right? There's the whole military argument of yeah. if you're able to defend country and participate in God's gun and country, you should be able to defend that. That that I, I don't disagree with that. But however, I, I, I can see it going to 21 faster than banning catalog sales. You know what yeah. I mean? And if they ban catalog sales, you open up a website across the pond. Get yourself a P.O. box, change your merchant services over there, ship your distribution over there, deal with whatever computer requirements from an, from an age verification system, and mm-hmm. move on with your life. Or they're going to get themselves the product anyway. Right. They're going to get their product anyway. And, and again, the answer is, and this is my final thought, and then we'll wrap up and do Sticks of the Week. Um, sure. The... The separation from vape and cigarettes, we cannot be lumped in other tobacco products anymore. That's the argument we keep sending people. In Stogie Geeks, it's either 215, 16, or 17. That episode, we did a hypothetical because by that time in 2017, Trump was elected. Um, mm-hmm. and we, we did a, a hypothetical, Paul, myself, and a former host did, uh, if we could send someone to make the plea for FDA to President Trump, who would it be and whatnot? And then, and the answer was then there too. It's separation. I don't understand this. I don't understand this. That's my rant. Final thought on that. No, I agree with you. I mean, <clears throat> to me, that's uh, that, that's very strong and a point in part, uh, point, uh, in this, in, at where we're at now, like you said, I mean, it, it got passed in the subcommittee. Now it's about dissecting this, 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 uh, this bill, and and figuring out. And you know, and there was some promising, uh, some notes or some some sentences in there uh, that some people had made uh, that you know they're they're definitely going to dissect this through and and then figure out you know what you know what side of the coin we're going to end up on. Yep. You think that twenty one will happen before? Catalog and internet sales. Uh, I would say I would say probably yeah that'd yeah. be the first that'd be the first act yeah. if they're if they, if it's going to go that way. Yep, and then they'll consider it a victory, and they're dealing with non-youth, and they can go stand in front of the podium and say I love you and vote for me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Terrible. Story geeks, when we come back, it's sticks of the week with Joe and I. We'll let you know what we've been smoking. We're going to take a quick break. 